Across the country, there's an underground movement of parents heartbroken that their children are identifying as trans. They're worried that they will irreversibly harm themselves. And some are backing legislation to ban hormones and surgery. We met recently with 10 parents from a support group based in a southern city. Each fears social and professional backlash for speaking out and decline to show their face, except for group leaders Kevin and Christy Sisson. Their 21-year-old daughter has publicly identified as trans for several years. They only learned of her mastectomy, however, over Thanksgiving. I actually saw a post on social media. She was completely um, nude up top. It was just heartbreaking because that's what I have been hoping that I could stop. These trans-identifying kids and young adults encourage each other through TikTok, YouTube, Tumblr, and other social media. The parents we met describe similar patterns, what they see as almost a trans playbook. She did not inform us until she was a senior in college. So at this point, she had had two years of everyone around her affirming her. Kate and her husband first thought they had successfully talked their daughter out of her new identity. Then, after graduation, she moved out of state and issued demands. She sent us a video telling us that she had lied to us, that she was still a man and that she was planning on going forward, and that if we sent her any mail in a name other than her new name, she would send it back unopened. If we showed up and called her by her old name, she would call the police on us for harassment. Steve and his wife also received demands from their college-age son. The last time they saw him, the hormone treatment had already begun. He was starting to grow breasts. Um, you know, he, his, his voice, whether real or, um, you know, acting, was higher. The Sissons say that in the last six months, their support group has grown to 20 families. They're part of an international organization, parents of rapid onset gender dysphoria kids. 1,500 have joined since 2017 with groups or clusters in 49 states. The organization serves primarily as a support to these parents, distraught over their children's sudden change. This group is going a step further by speaking out in favor of legislation they believe could help other families. Bills that would prevent doctors from providing hormones, puberty blockers, or surgery to children. We want to do as a state uh, everything that we can to protect these youth from making decisions that they may significantly regret later in their lives. North Carolina is one of 16 states considering legislation. One proposed bill would make the treatments illegal for young people under 21. Right now, the age of consent is 18. When a child turns 18, it's almost like they want to give themselves a birthday gift of hormones. And once they get on the hormones, the next step is to have some type of gender reassignment surgery. There's also an oophorectomy, which is just removing both the ovaries on either side. The field of gender reassignment surgery is rapidly growing and includes numerous options to remove reproductive organs. Tens of thousands of young people are finding ways to pay, even through sites like GoFundMe. Trans activists and much of the medical profession maintain the hormones and surgeries are compassionate by helping to address mental health issues like anxiety, depression, and suicide. Some hormone experts, though, like Dr. Paul Ruse, point out there is no long-term research on how they affect the body. And they're collecting data on these children uh, over time to see what happens. And so it's going to be you know, 10, 20, or 30 years uh, from now before we understand what is going on. And the question that needs to be asked is, uh, if this turns out not to be a good approach, how many children are going to be harmed? President Biden has long pushed acceptance for these kids, even as young as eight, who say they're transgender. For all transgender Americans watching at home, especially young people, you're so brave. I want you to know your president has your back. The parents we spoke with said they could lose relationships with family and friends and even their jobs if they speak out publicly. I don't want to face the people who are going to say that I'm a transphobe or that I'm a bigot. We're in the minority. 
And it's hard to stand up against this tidal wave right now. But, and you might lose family and friends over it. We have. But I, I am not going to sacrifice my child's well-being in order to get along. They also grieve the profound loss that comes with estrangement, many with children who have cut themselves off. Still, these parents tell us they're holding out hope that at some point their children will return. I told her that whenever she's ready to come home, just let me know. Heather Sells, CBN News.